Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about an episode from season five, episode one, the first edition, when John Boy publishes the first edition of the Blue Ridge Chronicle. This episode was written by John McGreevy and directed by Larry Dobkin. Early in the episode, you see Richard walking with a cane. Um, evidently, he was filming a movie, September 30, 1955, about the death of James Dean. And he had a motorcycle accident during the filming and broke his ankle. And so then they put that uh, filming sort of on hold for some time. And we were back filming the Waltons. And because he couldn't really walk on that ankle. He used a cane for some time until it was well enough for him to walk on. And they explained it in the episode saying that John Boyd had an accident riding Ike's motorcycle. John Boyd, how long are you gonna be on that cane? Oh, not as long as it's gonna to take to fix a motorcycle. <laughs> Ironic that early in the episode, uh, there is a car crash. <laughs> Judge Thornberry drives his vehicle into the front of the soda shop and breaks the glass. And fortunately, no one is injured. John Boy, uh, in, always in search of news, uh, is interested in what happened. He talks to eyewitnesses. And this sets the stage for a bit of a conflict regarding what is news, what should be published, what shouldn't be published his feeling that it's his responsibility to tell the truth and look for the truth, even if it doesn't suit the political or personal uh, agenda of other people, that he can't play favorites. And that's very, really the theme of this episode from John Boy's character's perspective. There were a couple of scenes that I noticed in this episode where we saw some mic shadows early on in Ike's store. Olivia and Grandma are in there, and at one point as Olivia goes over to talk with Ike at the um, counter, it, uh, just up in the upper left-hand corner of your television screen, you would see a little bit of a shadow. Now that would not have dropped down into uh, far enough into the frame that on TVs at that time you would have seen it, but a little later on, it, in John Boy's Blue Ridge Chronicle room. The, basically, the shed got turned into where he published the paper. And there is a scene in there where the mic definitely drops far enough in that we would have been able to see it on any TV. So a few spots there of Mike's making the final edit. Mary Ellen and Aaron are going to be going on a double date with a couple of boys. In this case, one of these boys, the taller with the red hair, is actually Mary's real brother, Michael. So he had a little cameo here in this episode. A couple of subplots in this episode. One, Cora Beth thinks she's pregnant. She's very excited, so is Ike. Unfortunately, she finds out that it was a false pregnancy and she's absolutely crushed. And she just feels humiliated and that she should run home to Doe Hill, that she has nothing more to offer Ike. And what use is she? Because she finds out that she can't have children. Um, Ike, of course, loves Cora Beth and is crushed to think that she would leave and initially won't even talk to him. Fortunately, that uh, subplot does resolve favorably. And I think it even strengthens the relationship between Ike and Cora Beth. The other subplot involves Ben, who is selling ads for the Blue Ridge Chronicle. And in all of that, he, he has some boys he's been hanging out with. They've been playing pool, things like that. Um, and one evening to play poker, they end up borrowing the house of some people that are away. One of the boys is supposed to be looking out for their house. He knows how to get into the house. Well, it turns out Sheriff Bridges with John Boy along for the news, um, discover that Ben is amongst the boys who have now been caught having broken into this house. Creates quite a bit of conflict for Ben, John Boy, Olivia, uh, who can't believe that John Boy would disgrace the family by printing this news. So it really does create a conflict uh, for these characters 
and what's important, what's news, what's not. It's a good question. A very clever way to put this sequence together. John Boy is looking for Ben. Um, and we see clearly the pool hall. We see the sign for the pool hall. John Boy goes over and looks in the window. As he looks in the window, we hear the sound of pool balls hitting each other. We never see what John Boy sees, um, but we get the sense clearly that he's looking inside the pool hall. We know Ben's not in there. So in John Boy looking in, we don't need to see that he doesn't see Ben in there. We know that. Um, but that way, the set didn't have to be established. They didn't have to make sure that there was a pool table in the pool hall there that we could see all just for a point of view. Uh, we get that information with sound effects and other information that we have already been uh, privy to. So a very clever way to, to handle that without having to create a whole pool hall set. As John Boy struggles with the answer to what to do about not only the pressure he's getting from Judge Thornberry about not printing about his, um, his car accident, John Boy uh, thinks the judge was drinking. It was early in the day and he could smell alcohol on him. The judge is up for re-election and would like all this to go away, tries to persuade John Boy. Uh, he even goes to John, but John says, you know, it's his newspaper. He's going to, he needs to do what he wants with it. I can't tell him what to do with it. And the same thing with Ben. So at the end of the episode, uh, John Boy has decided that he's going to bury both the stories like on a back page. So although he's printing them, it's a compromise. Nobody will really see them particularly. Um, Olivia doesn't consider that a compromise she's happy with. And Ben ultimately is the one who decides he prints the front page with these stories on the front page and says, no, that's the news and they belong on the front page. So even though it paints him in a bad light, he feels it's important to do it right. Um, as John Boy and Olivia and John are out front talking about this and, and, and the conflict is in search of a resolution, I noticed in this one two shot that there seemed to be a light. It looks like a piece of one of our actual lights for lighting the set over in the right side of the frame there. So I can't figure out what else it is and it sure looks like a light. So another case of the camera just didn't catch that they could see this because it's kind of shadowed there. So uh, I don't know if you caught it without me mentioning it or whether it, it it was something that disappeared for you too. I mean, if you're really watching the actors, you don't necessarily see these things. And I think, thank goodness, we had so many wonderful performances going on all the time that some of these little errors that happen in television, I just don't think we ever caught them because we were engrossed in the story. And that's, that's good storytelling. So um, I appreciate that, uh, that we were able to do that and that these little mishaps maybe you weren't caught all the time. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the season five episode, the first edition. I will be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, more Ask Judy, and more with some of our cast members. Thanks for watching.